Close your eyes and follow your breath. Follow it all the way in, all the way out. The word follow here means that you keep track of it. Stay right with it all the way in, all the way out. Don't go anywhere else. Stay right here. As for any thoughts that might come in and pull you someplace else, you can let them go. You don't have to get involved. Because we're to do battle with our defilements. And the first the order of business is to establish something in the mind that you know that you can trust. When the mind is with the breath, you know it's in the present moment. So you want to stay right here. And then anything that comes in right now that would pull you away, you can say, well, this is not a friend of mine at the moment. And you want to sh show yourself that you can actually resist the, t the pull. As the Buddha said, when you gain victory over yourself, you've gained a victory that's hard to win, but also is really worthwhile. It's much better than gaining victory over a thousand other people. Because victory over other people, you end up creating karma. There's animosity. The people who lost are upset, and you have to hold on to your victory, you have to defend it. Whereas inside, there's no karma, only good karma. The karma of overcoming your stinginess, the karma of overcoming your lack of fairness in dealing with the people, and the karma, good karma of overcoming your own defilements. The practice of generosity is for gaining victory over your stinginess. You have things that you could use for yourself, but you realize that other people might use them well as well, and you're happy to share. You realize that the joy of generosity is something that's much more worthwhile than just holding on to things. Then there's the joy of the precepts. You realize that your behavior has been harmless and it's been fair. You don't like it when other people would kill you or steal from you or lie to you. So you don't do that with other people. Then finally with meditation. Greed comes in, aversion comes in, delusion comes in. And you can overcome these things. You don't have to follow them. All too often a thought comes in, we just go running with it. But here when you meditate, you can see the thought go running up, but you don't go. Because our defilements are like the kind of friends who get us to break the law, and then when the police come, they go running away. And we're the ones left holding the bag. We're the ones who are going to be punished. In other words, where your greed gets you to do something unskillful, it's not the greed that's going to suffer. Your anger gets you to do something unskillful. It's not the anger that's going to suffer. You're the one who's going to suffer. So you've got to realize you can't treat these things as your friends. They're your enemies in the disguise of friends. And so you have to do what you can to overcome them. And overcoming them basically means that you just don't give in to their power. You raise your mind above them. And as the mind gets raised above them, it becomes more expansive, it becomes a better mind, a more spacious mind, a mind that's really good to live in. So this is a kind of victory where the rewards really are lasting. And as I said, it doesn't create any bad karma with anybody at all. In fact, as you're being generous and being virtuous and as you're meditating, you're helping other people as well. The Buddha's example is of two acrobats, one standing on the shoulders of the other. And the one on, below says to the one on top, it's okay, you look out after me and I'll look out after you and that way we'll come down safely. And the one on top says, no, that won't do. I have to look after myself, you look after yourself, and that way we both help each other come down safely. In that case, the Buddha said the one on top, who was the student actually, was right. You maintain your sense of balance, it makes it easier for other people to maintain their balance as well. And so that's what you do. You're not letting yourself get tipped over by greed, tipped over by anger, tipped over by delusion. And this way you rise above them in a victory that lasts. As I would have said, this Noble Eightfold Path that he taught is a path to victory, unexcelled victory, the highest victory. So see that as a victory when you can overcome unskillful thoughts in the mind. It's a victory that's really worth practicing for, really worth striving for, and one that doesn't disappoint.